Hey everyone, welcome to Kids on the Living Edge. I'm Juan, I'm so glad that you joined me today. My goodness, it feels like so long and so many things have been going on. I know a lot of you are probably a little stressed out and wondering, when is my life gonna get back to normal? You know, this reminds me of why it's important to be connected to Kids on the Living Edge because we get our strength and our faith from the Word of God. You know, in Romans 8, 28, the Word tells us that we know God causes all things to work together for good. For who? For those who love God and for those who are the called according to his purpose. And this is God's promise, not just for me and for you, but for everyone who loves God. He's going to cause all these things to work out for good. And this reminds me of this week's lesson of Joseph. We've been talking about him all month long and been tracking these things that have been going on in his life. Things that are, are kind of like what we're going through now. Uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen one day to the next. Our routines are offline. And that's kind of how Joseph's life has taken course. In the midst of these stories, you're seeing betrayal, how his brothers betrayed him and threw him into a pit and sold him into slavery. And he had to be questioning, God, how are you going to make something good come out of this? You learned in our last lesson that he went to work in Potiphar's house, and that was probably a good thing. But then someone lied on him, and again, things went upside down. You know, this week, I think we need to look at Joseph's life one more time. We want to see what God can do in this very dark place where he is right now. That's right. Joseph is in jail for something he did not do. And he's going to meet two characters. And you'll notice that Joseph always looks for an opportunity to notice people and to help people. And he uses his gifts. He uses what God gave him. So tune into this video you're going to see right now. And we're going to talk on the other side of it about what you may have seen and noticed and maybe some questions for you to think about. So don't go anywhere. Watch this video on Kids on the Living Edge. It's time for a Bible story. The story of Joseph, part three. Do you need another refresher to get you caught up to speed on what happened last time? Nah, man, I got this. Check it out. I'm gonna do a rapid fire recap. Ready, go. <gasps> Joseph had 11 brothers and they were jerks and then he had some dreams where everything was bowing down to him and his brothers threw him in a pit and sold him into slavery and then he worked for Potiphar and then Potiphar's wife was a big jerk face and lied about him and threw him in the jail. Boom. Wow, that was actually pretty impressive. And yes, that's exactly where our story picks up. Joseph was wrongfully accused and thrown into jail, but it wasn't just a regular jail. This was a prison where all of the king's prisoners were sent, so it was extra secure. There is no way anyone was getting out of this place. Yeesh, so I guess that's about it for old Joseph, huh? Well, it was fun while it lasted. The end. No way, man. This is totally not the end of the story. Even though it looked like his situation was getting worse, the Lord gave Joseph great favor with everyone around him. The guards liked Joseph so much that they let him help out around the prison, they didn't even lock him up. Whoa, that's crazy. So that's what you mean when you were saying that through this whole deal, the Lord was with him? You bet. Because Joseph had a great attitude, was respectful, and cared about other people, his time spent in prison wasn't nearly as bad as it could have been. In fact, Joseph was so good at noticing people around him and going out of his way to care about them that one day, something happened that would change his life big time. Oh yeah, you said last time there was this big thing coming up. Is this it? Yep. And you're not going to get me with another to be continued, are you? Well, I'll let you know next time. To be continued. Ah, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, I was just joking. We're not done yet. Whew, thank goodness. Really got me good there. So, what happened? Since this prison was where all of the king's prisoners were sent, there were two men that used to work directly for the pharaoh. One was a baker, the other was a cupbearer. Wait, a cupbearer? His job was to put bears in cups? That sounds hard. You gotta either have some big old cups or some tiny bears. No, he wasn't a bear cupper. He was a cup bearer. That meant that he would serve drinks to the pharaoh in a cup. Ah, uh, gotcha. That makes more sense. So these guys were in jail, huh? Yep. Since Joseph was in charge of the prison, the guards assigned these two guys to him. Then, one night, both the baker and the cupbearer each had some pretty strange dreams. Oh boy, here we go again with the dreams. Oh, speaking of dreams, last night I had this crazy dream where my ears turned into chili dogs. No! Ah! I don't want to hear any more about your crazy dreams. We're talking about their dreams. The next day, Joseph could tell that something was bothering them. 
Both the cupbearer and the baker looked like they didn't sleep very well and were all stressed out. Well, I mean, they are in prison, not exactly a stress-free environment. Yeah, but this was different. Joseph was very good at noticing people around him and caring about them. So he asked them what was bothering them. They told him that they had some very strange dreams, but didn't know what they meant. I know what my dream meant, that I shouldn't eat chili cheese dogs right before I go to sleep. Well, that's true. But when Joseph heard that they were troubled by their dreams, he thought of something. Back home, God helped Joseph understand what his dreams meant, so he offered to help interpret the dreams of the baker and the cupbearer. Hey, look at that! Joseph's in jail? These guys go there too. Joseph can interpret dreams? These guys have dreams that need to be interpreted. You weren't kidding about God having a plan for Joseph's life, huh? Exactly. The cupbearer and the baker both told Joseph what their dreams were, and God revealed to Joseph what those dreams meant. The cupbearer's dream was about a vine and three branches that sprouted grapes, and he squeezed those grapes into the Pharaoh's cup. Joseph told him what that meant, that in three days he would be released and would go back to his job serving drinks to the Pharaoh. Good for him! That's awesome! So what about the baker's dream? In the baker's dream, there were three baskets of bread sitting on top of his head. A bunch of birds flew up and started eating out of one of them. Unfortunately, Joseph told him that this meant that in three days, the Pharaoh would have him killed. Yikes! Classic case of the old good news, bad news, huh? Did those things come true? They sure did. Three days later, the cupbearer was restored back to his job and the baker was, well, let's just say he sleeps with the fishes. What? Gross. Why would you sleep in a pile of fish? Ugh, that would smell terrible. No, like, you know, he took a dirt nap. Wait, now he's sleeping in the dirt? I mean, that's better than a pile of fish, but still, just sleep in a bed, dude. No, he died. Oh, gotcha. Took a double dip out of the old cosmic cookie jar, huh? Yeah, that's not a phrase. Never mind. So what happened next? Those guys just left and Joseph stayed in jail? Not exactly. Before the cupbearer left, Joseph asked him to tell the pharaoh about his situation, that he was wrongfully accused of something that he didn't do and thrown into jail. Oh, awesome. This is his chance to get set free. Did the cupbearer remember to tell the pharaoh about him? Uh, no. He forgot. What? You gotta be joking me. So Joseph just stays in prison? Bummer. He did for a while, but not forever. Two years after the cupbearer was released, something happened with Pharaoh. He had some strange dreams and didn't know what they meant. It really bothered him. Hey, this sounds familiar. Someone had a strange dream that needs to be interpreted. Who are you gonna call? Dream Buster! The Pharaoh got all of his wise men, sages, and the magicians together and told them to interpret the dream, but none of them knew what it meant. Then, all of a sudden, the cupbearer remembered that Joseph can interpret dreams. Yes, it's about time you remember about him. Tell the Pharaoh, tell the Pharaoh! That's exactly what he did. Pharaoh called for Joseph to be brought before him and explained what the dreams were. In one dream, there were seven fat, healthy cows standing by the Nile River. Then seven skinny, ugly cows came out of the river and ate up the fat cows. Uh, hold on. Why are you giving me all the grief for my dreams? That was the weirdest dream I've ever heard. The Pharaoh also dreamed that there was a stock of wheat with seven healthy heads of grain. Then seven other heads of grain sprouted that were thin and sun scorched and they swallowed up the healthy grains. Whoa, talk about weird dreams. Joseph's really got his work cut out for him, huh? What in the world? did those mean? God revealed to Joseph what the dreams meant, and he told Pharaoh everything. He said that there would be seven years of plenty in the land of Egypt, with more than enough food for everyone. But after that, there would be seven years of famine where there would be nothing to eat. Whoa, uh, that's pretty serious. So, like, what did Pharaoh do? He was so relieved to know what the dreams meant. He was also so glad to know that the famine was coming in seven years so everyone could start preparing and storing up food. Awesome! But wait, what happened to Joseph? Please don't tell me he goes back to jail. If he goes back to jail, I'm just going to start swinging. No, he didn't go back to jail. The Pharaoh was so impressed with Joseph that he gave him a job. Pharaoh made Joseph second in command over all of Egypt. What? Seriously? The big number two? Second in command? That is awesome! Yeah, man. The only person in the entire country with more power than Joseph was Pharaoh himself. Man, that is pretty incredible. You were totally right about God having big plans for Joseph's life. Doesn't get much bigger than that. No kidding. Joseph's life was totally changed. And it probably wouldn't have happened like that if he didn't notice the people around him back when he was in jail. And something else was about to happen that nobody expected. Nice try. I see you coming a mile away. You're about to do another to be continued, aren't you? I sure am. Bam! Yep, I called it. Totally called it. Wow. 
This has been incredible. What an incredible video about Joseph's life. Did you see that? How he was able to help the baker and the cupbearer and eventually become the number two in Egypt in charge of everything, second only to Pharaoh. You know, this is a wild and an adventurous story, but it's kind of like our story too. So we need to really look at it and say, God, what would you want me to learn from this? So let's ask a couple of questions. And I want you to talk these over with your family. For example, there's a question about Joseph having the opportunity to interpret the baker and the cupbearer's dreams. Did you think that he felt like being placed in prison was maybe a part of God's plan or God's promise over his life? Talk about that question with your family now. All right. Now, our second question is, do you think Joseph might have felt forgotten by God? Because for over two years, no one knew he was there. The cupbearer promised to tell Pharaoh about him, but he didn't for two years. So our question now is, do you think Joseph might have felt forgotten by God when the cupbearer forgot to tell Pharaoh about him for two long years? Go ahead and talk about this with your family now. All right, here's our third and final question. Have you ever felt that a rough time in your life led to an awesome promise from, from God for your life? So think about what's going on right now. For many of you, you're having a rough time finding things to do at home, not being able to see all of your friends and not have your routine. Do you think that this is going to lead to an awesome promise of God for your life? I know for me during this time, I spend a lot more time praying. I spend a lot more time worshiping and talking to God. So my relationship with God has gotten even closer through what is a really, really rough time. I hope that's what's happening in your life. And I hope that you'll continue to seek him and stay connected with us because we're not done yet with Joseph's story. So join us again on Kids on the Living Edge for the rest of the story. We'll see you then.